Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to the Muscle Intelligence Podcast. I have your host, Pepe Kolsky. If it sounds like I'm coming through a tin can, it's because I'm recording directly into my computer. I do not have a microphone, and I wanted to get this podcast out because it's awesome, and I love this information. Today, I am having an amazing conversation with Dr. William Pollock. He is a family physician with a practice near Baltimore, Maryland. He's had training in acupuncture, homeopathy, hypnosis, and body work, but most recently, he's considered the foremost authority on the use of pulsed electromagnetic field therapy. What does that mean? PEMF. Many of you have heard of PEMF therapy, PEMF mats, PEMF beds, PEMF devices, which are an incredible uh, value. They're all the rage right now in the biohacking world for enhancing recovery, enhancing blood flow, enhancing um red blood cell formation, decreasing inflammation. However, what I will say about PEMF is it's the Wild West. It, you know, There's so many devices making these ridiculous claims. And uh, the price range is anywhere from a few hundred dollars to over $30,000. Actually, I've seen a machine for $70,000. And so I really wanted to start to understand, I've been studying this stuff for five years, but I really started wanted to start to understand what is the difference? Because you know, people can make all the claims in the world. When they say it's not a medical device, they can tell you whatever they want. And um, there's a big difference, right? So I've bought probably seven devices over the last five years, actually probably longer than that. It's probably closer to 15 years at this point. Uh, I started with something called a frequency-specific microcurrent, probably back in, gosh, 2009, and I think it was miraculous for my healing. And I could dial it in. I could make myself fall asleep in minutes. If I put on a sleep protocol, I could wake myself up and make myself re energized for a workout. I could heal tissues at astronomical rates. And so that's what really got me interested in this PMF therapy. And so uh, I have been searching for someone who's truly an expert on PMF therapy, who really, ideally in my world, doesn't have... Uh, too much vested interest in promoting specific products. Now, in full transparency, Dr. Pollock doesn't own any of these products, but he does promote a lot of them on his website. So, you know, you guys use your discretion as to which products you're going to purchase. But I just really want to start digging into the science and start to understand, hey, what actually works uh, and why they're different. And so Dr. Pollock does an incredible job of kind of differentiating between power and frequency I ultimately would get into how to use PMF treatment for things like multiple illnesses and issues, uh, as well as help with optimizing health and how the different frequencies work in the body, uh, how PMF works with stem cells, um, specifically what PMF mat I'm currently using. I've actually got two devices that I currently use that uh, I think work. To be honest, like these, these things that you feel, or, sorry, you don't feel, but you think they're working, you know, and some of the ones in the past I know are working. Um, and I'm just not ready to spend $7,000 on a PMF mat. Uh, certainly if I was a professional athlete or something like that, still I'd consider it, but um, certainly not right now. <laughs> um, so thank you, Dr. Pollock, for joining me. And thank you to today's sponsor, our amazing friends over at Bioptimizers. So if you have not been listening to the podcast for any amount of time, you know that, or you wouldn't know that Bioptimizers has been maybe the longest running sponsor of the Muscle Intelligence Podcast. It's because they make amazing products that actually work. They're actually one of the 5,000 fastest growing companies in America for the last three years in a row, uh, just as testament for their quality of ingredients and repeat customers they're able to generate over and over and over again. Because their products are legitimate. They're simple formulations, often single ingredient, ingredient formulations that actually work. And so, in kind of staying in alignment with what we talked with Dr. Pollock, if you're under a huge amount of stress and you're looking for ways to modulate stress, you know, certainly a PMF mat is a good one, but I would say adding a magnesium supplement to your regimen for most human beings is in general a very, very good idea. Uh, if you're someone who's training often, if you're under a lot of stress, uh, certainly if you're not eating a very well-rounded diet, adding magnesium into your diet is a great idea. I know, as, as many of you may know, that uh, the Bioptimizer's Magnesium called Magnesium Breakthrough is by far my favorite product for, um, pro for magnesium. And here's the, the best part. If you head over right now to bioptimizers.com, 
and use the code MUSCLE10, same code we always offer, you're going to get ridiculous November deals. They're doing a Black Friday sale for the entire month of November. I'm actually looking at the website right now and you're getting 32% off, 27% off, even just 12% off one bottle, but depending on how many you buy. They've also just got you know a very, very big range of incredible products from this brand new deep sleep product to uh, keto optimization products. And so if I would, if I were you, I would start with some really basic things. If you're not already using magnesium, start there. If you're someone who consumes animal products on, on a frequent basis, adding in some masszymes is just a, just an incredible idea. You know, I'm a massive fan of masszymes. It's a product I've used for a very long time. Um, they've got P3OM, which is their prebiotic and probiotic super strain for optimizing gut health. Um, they've got some pretty cool gut health stacks that can ultimately help you optimize for gut health. Because you know, one of the one of the things I run with a lot of my clients is people come and they go, you know, Ben, my results have stalled, or you know, I feel like I'm not losing fat as as well as I could. And oftentimes, this starts in the gut, and so. You know, I do suggest that a lot of my clients. Again, I'm not suggesting for anyone specifically, but um, if you're if you're dealing with gut issues, looking at things that are going to help optimize gut health is a great idea. So head over to bioptimizers.com/slash muscle intelligence, or just head over to bioptimizers.com and use the code muscle ten to get temper to get an enormous uh, range of discounts. Actually, this month only when um, you use the code muscle ten at checkout. So huge shout out to our buddies at Bioptimizers. For hooking us up. This is exclusive to the listeners of the Muslim Intelligence Podcast. Ladies and gents, thanks for being here. Enjoy the show with Dr. William Paula. Dr. William Paula, thank you so much for joining me, sir. Uh, you are the world's authority on pulse electromagnetic field therapy. And I think a lot of people have heard of PMF, but they're confused by its potential benefits. They're, they're certainly un, unsure of whether or not it's healthy, whether it could be potentially negative. I know there's a lot of people out there. Uh, hearing a lot of things about 5G and then people kind of put, they lump them together in the same category. And so I'm really, really grateful to have you here to not only discuss the benefits, to kind of uh, to parse through all the potential misinformation that we're being thrown. So thank you for being here, sir. And I think there's a lot of education necessary, largely because there is a lot of misinformation. And a lot of that misinformation is because of product companies. So there are companies that sell specific products, particularly in multi-level marketing companies, whose soldiers, basically the distributors, are selling the party line and they don't know nothing about magnetic therapy. Oh, yep. Yeah. This is the machine. And unfortunately, a lot of those companies are also, those devices are 30-year-old technology. They haven't, haven't evolved in 30 years. Right. Some new wrinkles coming out with new frequencies and rah, rah, sis, boom, bah, and, you know, bells and whistles, but they haven't fundamentally changed the, the approach. And that's one of the benefits. That's one of the reasons I wanted to chat with you and your, your audience is because the technology has changed a lot in the last 10 to 20 years with the availability of new devices that can do a much, much better job in the setting of performance and training and rehabilitation. So we can it So Yeah, I'd love to. So could we start off for the audience who may be a little undereducated when it comes to PEMF is what exactly is it, what is it doing and why would we want to use it? Let's get rid of the elephant in the room first. And that's EMFs. So peak EMFs and EMFs have the same roots, EMF, electromagnetic fields. Or I consider EMFs to be environmental magnetic fields. And those fields are designed for communication purposes. They're not designed for human for human use directly in terms of healing or, or anything, or even have been adequately uh, studied to look at the particular risks associated with them. So EMFs are basically high frequency magnetic fields. I and mean, there's a category of EMFs, which is dirty electricity coming out of our power lines. But that is essentially a, an overlap with high frequency magnetic fields. So microwaves are high frequency, they're extremely short wavelengths, and they're broadcast into the environment. They have transmitters, towers, and so on. They're broadcast into the environment. And whatever the receivers are, the receivers use that, that technology, the, those wavelengths, to do what, they're, what they want them to do. So because it's broadcast, it's essentially ubiquitous. This is what we call an open loop. It's open, okay? And it can go on for almost infinity. PEMFs, on the other hand, are designed by virtue of current flow through a wire. And that's Tesla's work. Tesla originally discovered that. 
current flowing through a wire. So let's see my thumb is the wire and the current is flowing in the direction of my thumb. So every time current is flowing through that wire, at particular when it's pulse, that's what P stands for in EMFs, pulse magnetic fields. When the current flows through the wire, every time there's a pulse of that current, you get a magnetic field perpendicular to it. So that's the right hand rule. So it goes up and goes out and comes back. So it wraps around the wire perpendicularly, right? And then it comes back, it collapses. It doesn't go out into infinity. It doesn't go out forever, miles and miles and miles. It's limited to the wire. Now, if you got a wire with a current that's really powerful and strong, you can get a pretty big magnetic field from it. And that's where it becomes handy uh, from a clinical perspective, from, from uh, usefulness, uh, health, health usefulness. So these fields are not powerful in the sense that they are not high frequency. So high frequency, the risk of high frequency is that they are absorbed. They're absorbed by the body. That's the basis behind a microwave oven. It's high frequency. Mm -hmm. It's absorbed by whatever's in that oven. And because it's absorbed by it, it heats. And that's where the risk comes in, is the heating aspect of these, these fields. And the more exposure you have to them, the more the body has to deal with it. It's like you know, blasting you with a cold blast of air or showering you with very cold water or a high, um, very hot steam or something. Your body's going to have to react to that. It's a stimulus. And whatever the stimulus is, the body's going to have to deal with it. And hopefully the body will shed it very rapidly, very quickly, and have no harm. But the longer it lasts, the higher the dosage, the stronger it is, then the more likelihood of harm. So the same thing happens with cell phones. If you have a cell phone to your ear, look at the ear after 10 or 15 minutes of cell phone use to, the, to that ear. It's red. Fat ash is often bright red. So what's happening to your ear as a result of that telephone being next to your ear, the microwave is being next to your ear. You're cooking your ear. And there's research now that shows that people have ear, have a, my, uh, use their cell phones to their ear for hours and hours at a time over months and months and years and years can develop brain tumors, the base of the brain. So what we, those are called acoustic neuromas. That's because of continuous use and those microwaves go into the brain minimally, but again, chronic use over a long period of time causes damage to the tissues that doesn't recover. PEMFs, on the other hand, are designed for clinical use. They're not designed for communication. They're designed for clinical use. There are some high frequency magnetic fields that are designed for clinical use too that burn tissue. You want to burn off warts, or if you want to burn a nerve in the back and spine, that's sending off pain signals and you don't have you have no solution for it. So what do you do? You burn the nerve. And that's high frequency. So it's used that way too. But that's very limited use and mostly in clinicians' hands. PEMFs, again, on the other hand, are available to the public. And again, they're extraordinarily safe. And they can range in intensity from extremely low to extremely high. They can range in frequency from extremely low to pretty high, but not as high as microwaves. Right? That's why they're safe. They're not, they're not at those levels of absorption into the body. So the fields that, use, that are used clinically go through the body, all the way through. The body is basically air to a magnetic field. It's as if it wasn't even there. So that's the good thing about it. It goes right on through. And so that means, again, the harm aspect of it is limited because it doesn't get absorbed and stay in the body. So every time there's a pulse, the magnetic field goes through the body, it comes back, and that pulsation basically causes changes in the electrical systems of the body. So we're an electrical being. We're an electromagnetic being. And so P and F's currents and magnetic fields interact together. That's why we have electromagnetic. You can't separate it. Wherever they have electrical, you have magnetic. And when you have electrical and you stimulate that electrical with magnetic, then you get effects on the electrical with the magnetic as well. So we can get magnetic interferences. So if there's a big EMP blast in the air or there's a huge solar uh, cycle or solar flare, electronics goes out. Why does it go out? Because the electrical interferes with the magnetics or the magnetics interferes with the electrical on the planet. So I hope that uh, settles that concept a little bit. Yeah, that makes a ton of sense. That's that's hugely valuable because, uh, I mean, you hear a lot of time people are just confused and like, well, I don't want to subject myself to even more frequency. So it's someone who's living in, in a standard, you know, larger U.S. city. Uh, again, it's kind of off topic, but they're, they're, you're, so you're, you can just assume you're basically bathing in these high frequency signals more, more or less all the time. So the key there is dosage. A uh, dosage is the intensity of the magnetic or the electrical field or the, the stimulation and the length of time that you're providing that dosage. Unless you're sitting right under a, a tower, a microwave tower, your dosing is going to be pretty low. 
the dosing of a cell phone to your head is relatively low. So it takes a lot of dosing over a long period of time to create the, the risk of harm. Same thing with microwaves. The fact that we're moving around all the time and we can't avoid it. You're in, in North America anywhere. You're dosed. We have radar that's dosing us. We have AM signals. We have FM signals. We have TV signals. All of those are dosing us to varying degrees. So maintaining health and maintaining uh, essentially the robustness of your ability to react to those. So if you get an exposure temporarily and then it dies off, your body says, okay, that was interesting and moves on. If, you, if you're sick, if you are handicapped, if your body is not as healthy as possible, is not optimized, then you're much more likely to be affected by that exposure than if you're, you are otherwise. And that's the good thing about magnetic field therapy that we'll get into is that magnetic field therapy, PEMF therapy, actually your PEMF use on a regular basis actually protects you against those exposures because they're negative exposures in a sense, right? So what we're trying to do then is to make the body as healthy as possible. So when you whack the body with a little bit of uh, magnetic field from the environment, but the body is strong, there's almost no reaction. Now, it can be cumulative if you're doing it every single day, hours and hours and hours at a time. So linemen are people working around microwave towers. They're the technicians. They have a much higher risk of exposure, and, and there is an occupational risk for those individuals. Yeah, very interesting. That's actually, I'd love to talk about that. So mechanistically, what's happening? How do we develop this protective mechanism? Um, again, just to be healthy, as much as healthy as possible. So magnetic field therapy and microwaves share similar reactions in the body. You know, the, the biggest difference, of course, is the absorption aspect. of it. So when a magnetic field passes through a body, a PEMF passes into a body, into and through a body, what it's doing is it's creating charge. There are probably other mechanisms that you could talk about, string theories and quantum theory and so on, but they, this was not really well-established science, and so a lot of this is basically people conjecturing and hypothesizing. But there's a lot of science about PEMF therapy. I have over 30,000 abstracts on the effects of uh, PEMFs on biology. There's a lot of literature. Unfortunately, it's not known in, that well in the medical community. But doctors look largely ignore it or are not aware of it. But PMF therapy, basically, by virtue of that aspect of increasing charge of the tissues, that, that increased charge of the tissues then makes the tissue more have more energy to do the work it needs to do. So if you cut yourself, you're a normal human being, you're the best shape of, of anybody on the planet. If you cut yourself, what are you going to heal immediately? Faster than most unhealthy people. Oh, even the health, even really healthy people still don't heal immediately. Right? The body has to begin, react to it. The body has to initiate all kinds of mechanisms to heal that wound. And the healthier you are, the younger you are, the more stem cells you have, and so on, the faster you're going to heal. I had a three-year-old girl who cut off the end of her thumb at a door jack. And father fortunately called me before the surgeons had at it. What surgeons would do is clean it up and put a graft on it. Then that girl would have had a deformed thumb for the rest of her life. So I heard about the fact that kids up to about age 11, beyond the first joint, may be able to recover. So I said, what have you got to lose? Put the, put the, the piece that was cut off, sew it back on again, and use it as a bandage, if nothing else. It's biological, it's a person's own tissue anyway, right? So we did that, and then we started magnetic field therapy an hour and a half to three hours a day. Literally, and I had pictures of the sequencing of healing. Literally, in 12 weeks, she's regrowing her nail. She regrew her thumb. Oh. But that's, that's the power of PMF therapy to initiate healing processes in the body. So if you're doing that on a regular basis, you're taking care of business before it gets too far down the road, typically. I've read some interesting stuff around frequency and healing the body, and I'd be curious if you could clear up some, some just basic science there. So obviously, all of our cells have a charge you know, some negative charge. Body's tissue, but actually our tissue is made up of molecules. And what cover what, what governs the molecules is physics. And then what governs the physics is quantum physics. And then we can go higher, yeah. the spirit and so on. So that, that's the hierarchy. So we're, we're tissue. We, look, we feel and function primarily as tissue. We're not aware of the molecular actions. And we're not aware of the physics that controls those molecular actions. For example, salt. 
sodium and chloride cannot dock. Sodium cannot dock with chloride unless the physics allows it. So physics is a, controls everything below it. Right. And so just my, my limited understanding is as we start to lose this ability to main, maintain um, charge in the cell, the cell loses its ability to do its function. And so something like PMF is effectively restoring this negative charge. Is that in, in summary? The question becomes how efficient is the body? Our fuel aspect of efficiency in a vehicle, on an engine, motor engine, is only about 20%. That's how efficient it is. The body is only about 25% efficient hmm. at using energy to do work. So we're hugely inefficient. So even if we're absolutely optimized in terms of our efficiency, we're still 70% inefficient. So that means that even a healthy person, a completely healthy young person, needs the help to regenerate. Now, that little girl with the thumb, if we left it alone, would she have regenerated her thumb? Honestly, I have no idea because we didn't have a control group. Right? But in her case, 12 weeks later, that's miraculous. So magnetic field therapy adds energy to whatever system you have. It's going to add energy and it's going to amplify any system you have. So typically, wounds heal in about half the time with magnetic field stimulation. Like an example, my wife broke her little toe. So her toe was like that. And usually as a, as a doctor, and I've seen these many times, done x-rays, it's broken usually. So we body tape the toe, standard medical procedure, body tape the toe, put her in a hard shoe, platform shoe. And I immediately started the same magnetic th th device that I used for a little girl, I use it for my wife. So black and blue, painful, swelling, the usual things that you'd expect from a fracture. Next morning, so she did 24 seven. The next morning she woke up, all the bruising is gone, all the swelling is gone, all the pain is gone. Wow. I, then she used it for another 24 hours. 24 hours, continuous. Woke up the following morning, walked a mile in tennis shoes. Use it for another 24 hours, walked three miles in tennis shoes. We're going to talk about what device that it is. But first, um, I have a question before we move away from um, high frequency stuff. Do you have any practices that you're using currently to kind of protect yourself? Or are you just like moved out in the woods, it looks like, uh, from, from the constant ubiquitous exposure? No, that's, it's almost useless. There's so much variability. So what we do in order to be as healthy as possible, I'm sure most of your listeners are doing that. They're eating properly, they're resting properly, they have the right attitudes, right? They have the right nutrition, they're taking supplements. So you do all those things to basically keep the body optimized in its function, then you're going to rely on the body to take care of it. Right. And each one live on a mountaintop. How much value, in your opinion, do uh, does something like grounding have in uh, optimizing for cellular voltage? So um, grounding is a concept that relates back to humans on a planet that didn't have EMFs. It relates back to a, a, a time on the planet when we didn't have any other forms of stimulation. So grounding basically balances the electromagnetic field of the, of this superficial levels of the body as we move ourselves away from the natural uh, electrical flows in the in the ground itself then we deprive ourselves of that stimulation that level of stimulation now if you own a pmf system that system for that thumb is already going to be uh, almost um, a thousand times stronger that grounding Right? And if we're talking about magnetic field therapies for healing fractures, uh, for magnetic field therapies that are used for concussions and depression, we're talking about millions of times stronger than grounding. So grounding is better than nothing, right? But yeah. it's not as good as we ha have available to us. Now we're comparing apples and apples. Is, is grounding like just a super, super low exposure to what the equivalent of a PNMF would be? Like, are they very similar in nature? In a sense, so when you expose the skin to the electrical potentials in the, in the ground, so for example, in terms of pipelines, if you put a pipeline in the ground, the metal in the pipeline interacts with the minerals in the ground. They create electrolysis, right? There's a dynamo, what we call a dielectric, there's current moving back and forth. 
When that happens, it breaks down the pipeline. So what do they do with the pipelines? They wrap them in material that shields the pipeline from the earth itself. So those electrical potentials then are can be good or bad. So basically, when we do the magnetic field therapy, we're stimulating a lot more than that. If you take a, a, a bracelet, a copper bracelet, and then many people do that, right? They wear copper bracelets. So research has shown that a copper bracelet um, causes uh, fluid to build up under the bracelet because you don't get evaporation under the bracelet. So when you build up sweat, you're building up electrolytes. When you build up electrolytes, the electrolytes interact with the copper to create a dielectric. So that what that copper, what that dielectric does then is it goes up the body through the meridian system. Because the meridian system in the body is very superficial, typically. And a lot of what magnetic fields do, that's how I got involved in magnetic field therapy, is I started, I want to replace needles, acupuncture needles. And how do you stimulate acupuncture points and meridians? Well, of course, you can use acupressure, you could use light, you could use lasers, you could use uh, heat. There's all kinds of ways to stimulate acupuncture points. Well, magnetic fields do the same thing. So when you increase the energy going up the, up the extremity, it's maybe five to 10 times stronger than the body's natural energy. That stimulated energy is five to 10 times stronger. Over time, that adds up. So it, ha it will have a of person may have some utility there and somewhere in some like cover. And that's the principle behind it, is it creates current flowing in the body, which then helps the tissues to heal. So high intensity magnetic fields or higher intensity magnetic fields do basically the same thing. They're increasing the charge of the tissues, which then gives the tissues more energy to do the work that they should be doing. Got it. So this kind of brings me then to this conversation around the different frequency bands. So we, we know there's there's multiple different frequencies. So you'll hear some PMF companies saying, hey, we only use this frequency. And some of them saying, we, we have all these different you know recipes that you can expose yourself to all these different types of uh, frequencies. Is there any like legitimate science around, um, you know, so as an example, there's a product that comes to mind and they'll say, hey, this product here is going to help your liver, or this product here is going to help with fibromyalgia, or this not pro product, but this like frequency. So they try to dial you in, like, oh, this one's going to help this specific tissue. Is that is that a real thing? Partial. And I would have to say minimally. Based on what we're really relying on with magnetic field therapy, which is to increase charge of the body, that principle is called Faraday's law. Michael Faraday in the 1800s discovered that when you pulse a magnetic field through a wire that's in a circuit with a light bulb, that you need a certain amount of power to that stimulation at a certain frequency of stimulation to create uh, the light bulb to, to turn on. You don't have any electricity flowing in the wire, but the magnetic field causes current to flow in the wire, which is really what we're doing in the body. The light bulb turns on. There's no current, but it turns it on. So what he found basically is it's related to a Faraday's law, which basically summarized is the change in intensity divided by the change of time, dB slash dt. So the higher the intensity and the faster that pulse goes into the body, the higher the dB dt, the more charge is going to be produced. So if you tickle that wire in his experiment, if you tickle it with a very low magnetic like field at whatever frequency, it's not going to produce enough charge. It has to be a stronger magnetic field produced at a specific rate that then induces the charge. So what these people are doing is they're using that principle that you're iterating as a, it's a correct principle. The problem is that you have to have the right frequency for the task you're, you're doing. So is there a specific frequency for the liver? How many cells in a liver? Oh, is it right. all exactly the same? The liver's full of nutrients. Probably not. Metabolizing, it's active, it's got blood supply, it's got everything. Will one frequency help the liver? Yeah. There's so little literature, there's so little research to say that a frequency does this, that it does anything specific. So I don't rely on that. I wrote a book called Power Tools for Health. I summarized 500 different studies that are in the in references in the book for all the different actions of magnetic fields and how they work for different conditions. And the frequencies are all over the place. Most of the time, these frequencies are chosen for research for practical reasons or because somebody else did it and they found a following effect therefore i'm going to do it as, as well so a lot of it's you know monkeys follow each other i'm not saying that they're monkeys but you know basically they're just a tribe they're just following each other so what happened oh, yeah, i understand okay and we then we have a we have a legend now that 
this frequency is apart for this, and this frequency is apart for that. And the people who do rife, I don't do rife therapy. I think it's it has probably has a legitimate value. But right now, unfortunately, there's no good research to guide the specific use. Can you describe what, what rife is? So rife, uh, Royal Rife uh, was a microbiologist basically at the beginning of the 19th century who developed a uh, microscope. And he discovered that frequencies uh, would work for doing certain things in the body. He had a Petri dish. Hmm. Now, it's one thing to do in the Petri dish or in a test tube. So if you take a liver cell and put it in a Petri dish and you excite it, you do different things with it with certain frequencies, and aha, this works. Well, so then you say, okay, well, if that works in a Petri dish or a test tube, it's got to work in the body. Hmm. Right, when the body now is infinitely more complicated than a Petri dish. And a human is infinitely more complicated than a mouse or a rat, right? So it's very hard to extrapolate. And as a medical doctor, I want reliability. I want predictability. I want to know that I give you this dose, it's going to do the following actions. So at this point, all this frequency stuff is not sound medicine. It's not sound science. So what we rely on more than anything is the intensity. Because the intensity is what drives that charge. And we know this huge amount of research that proves that yes that that's what that's what's happening in the body and it's effective and again my my book power tools for health has all that science one of the big takeaways that i got from your uh, talks and your website was it just comes down to how many gauss right does that sound uh, more or less accurate density is important it's not just gauss so i do vary the frequencies i do use frequency therapies if you will for the brain okay oh the brain is a different way brainwave patterns, right? So when we're in deep sleep, we're in delta. We're in light sleep, we're in theta. If we're uh, relaxed, we're in alpha. If we're thinking and learning and processing, and if you're listening and you're digesting what we're talking about here, you're going to be in beta. And then we have gamma and so on. So those then become important. If you want to manipulate the brain, you can use those frequency patterns to oscillate, cause oscillations, and it's called entrainment. You're causing the oscillations that are in the brain to now oscillate with the pattern that you're giving the brain, and the brain starts to listen. So that's frequency following. That's the whole principle behind radio waves. You got a radio wave at a specific frequency, and then you have a tuner, and what you do is you're tuning the tuner to be at a frequency to match the frequency in the air that's coming into your tuner, and now, bingo, you have a radio station coming through. Well, we have that same kind of frequency matching in the brain when we're doing brain stimulation. So we have devices... Um, well, there's a device that I use called the Flex Pulse. It's specifically designed for that purpose. To give you a frequency to help you to sleep, to give you a frequency to relax, to be alert. Uh, I'll give you an example. I had to pick up my daughter at the airport or from Charleston. She's coming from Charleston. She was supposed to be in at 8.30. She didn't come in until 2.30. Well, I had to be at the office the next morning. I had to go pick her up at the airport. So what do I do? I could have a cup of coffee. I could take uh, phenylephrine. And I could do all kinds of stimulants, right? Or... But because I had magnetic field therapy, I knew that I could use 13 hertz or 23 hertz to wake me up. So this Why those specific frequencies? A specific frequency for, for alertness, 23 hertz. That's beta. Now, there's different range of beta frequencies. I chose 23 hertz. So what I did is I put a coil at the back of my neck, this portable battery-operated machine, uh, similar to like a kid with a pop. So then I put it at the back of my neck, Boing, wide awake. I'm literally boing. And then, so yep. it left it on my neck until I got her back from the airport. I was alert the whole time. I did not waver. I I, ha I didn't get road hypnosis. It's like 30, 40 miles to drive in the middle of the night. Um, so as soon as I got back to the house, I took it off. Wow. No this is the flex pulse that you're using for this? It was a magnetic pulse. And the reason for the magnetic pulse, again, is it goes into the brain, goes all the way through. And it interacts with the charges in the brain that are oscillating at that depth delta frequency or beta frequency or whatever. So then I'm in train, right. like the signal in the uh, AM radio signal with the tuner. So my brain is the tuner. I'm giving you the signal, and the tuner starts to coincide with that frequency. Magic. And does the... Does the proximity matter in that case if you're trying to specifically keep your water on your neck? And so does the intensity. 
So in that case, I was using a 200 Gauss magnetic field. The Earth's magnetic field is about 0.5. So earthing is going to be basically 0.5, 0.6, 0.7. It's very, very weak. But if you want to grab more the, uh, the attention of the brain with more energy, you have to use more energy to grab the brain's attention. So an example of that would be if I'm whispering to you in your mind, you can go la di da la di da and you don't, you know, you stop hearing me. If we're having a conversation like we're having now, it's hard to ignore me, but you can't, mm. right? And especially if there's a distracting sound in the background or, you know, you have gurgling in your gut or whatever. So then, then say, okay, fine. Then I raise it to a point where I'm yelling at you. There's no way you can avoid listening to me. Right. My kind of field therapy is similar to that. So depending on the level of intensity, that will tend to grab the body's attention more. So the higher the intensity to the brain, the faster it'll grab the brain, the faster it'll entrain and lock in. So you're seeing this benefit with 200 cows. Talk to me about things that are 12,000 to 20,000 cows. Like, is that just overkill? If you're seeing benefit with 200, is it, is it unnecessary? Oh, no. I, I think uh, this is where the research has evolved. Those early machines, the ones that are being sold by the multi-level marketing people. So this is a key for your listeners. You have got to ask what the intensity of the field is. And the people who are selling these devices don't want to talk about it. All right? Because then they have to start describing the differences between stronger machines and weaker machines. So all they focus on is frequency because they can't talk about anything else. All right? That's why they talk about frequency. But it's really largely irrelevant. If you have if you have a bridge and you're, the wind is pulsing at a certain rate. If it's just a slight breeze, it's going to barely affect the bridge. If you want to knock that bridge down, you have had a powerful wind with powerful oscillations that cause the bridge now to vibrate and, and collapse. Well, the body's the same way. So you can use these intensities to produce better effects faster that will last longer. So you don't have to have as much exposure to produce large effects in the body. So with these very weak magnetic systems to get effects in the body, another example, there are FDA-approved machines to heal fractures that won't heal. They're called non-union fractures. Okay, that's a disaster, fracture that won't heal. So after six months and a fracture hasn't healed, it's called a non-union. So the FDA approved a machine that's about 16 Gauss. Not very strong. But they found out in their research that you have to use that machine nine hours a day to heal that fracture. Nine hours a day. So you got to put a machine over that fracture site for nine hours a day. And then evaluated with whether people did that or not. And then they looked at the results of healing. And they discovered if you did nine hours a day, you'd heal in three months. Not not next day. It took three months. Right? If you did only, if you did three hours a day, it took you twice as long to heal. So you have to do the right amount of stimulation. So the stronger the magnetic system is, the better the better the results, the faster the results, the more the body listens, the more energy you're creating in the body, which then gives the body, you know, the ability to, to do better work faster. So, so when you're healing, like, sorry, God. And to go back to your question. So you can expect five gauss or 10 gauss or 200 gauss is going to have certain levels of action. If I'm trying to stimulate the brain and I'm only using five gauss, I have to do a lot more stimulation of the body. So like the acupuncture system, if I'm laying on a weak pad, it's stimulating all the acupuncture points of the body. Well, they cascade up into the brain and they will increase the brain more than a local stimulation will. So it's amplification. But again, with the high intensity magnetic systems, you can do that much better faster. So th what's the upper limit? We honestly don't know. And right now there are machines that are approved to treat depression called TMS, transcranial magnetic stimulation. So these are high intensity <laughs> magnetic fields. And the way they use them is they take the coils, which are like a figure of eight coil, and put it on the side of the hand over what we call the motor cortex, right? That part of the brain that controls mu muscle movement is right here. So they put that over that area and they increase the intensity until they get a contraction of the hand on the opposite side of the body. And that's called the motor threshold. They said, now, how? now we've calibrated that brain in terms of the physiologic reactions. And then they take that coil and then put it over the front of the forehead and crank it up to 125%. Not just 100%, not just what it caused you had to move, but they now crank it up even more. And that's what they use for treating depression. So you're putting a huge amount of energy, 8,000 Gauss, 10,000 Gauss, into the brain. 
to treat depression. And we're seeing the same kinds of benefits with Parkinson's and MS and TBI, brain injuries. All of that causes better reactions in the body, better healing and so on. Now, the other, the other systems weaker than that can certainly work, but you need to spend more treatment time. John, which, which machine were you using for your wife and for the girl? Was it the Flex Pulse? Um, it was a device called the Micro Pulse or the, or the girl and um, the Flex Pulse for my brain. The Flex Pulse. Your, 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 your wife broke her toe. Was that the same one, the Micro Pulse? It's actually the same principle, the same intensity. But the difference is MicroPulse already has essentially one one program, whereas the FlexPulse uh, has 10 programs. They allow you to do 10 different things. At what point does it become too much? Because whenever we explore that, you said they haven't really found a, a hot amount that's too much. What if I did a few hours a day of 20,000 goes? Would there be some negative repercussions or just like more energy production? Um, well, there's exhaustion. You know, this interesting. The body has to produce that energy. It has to use its resources to produce that energy. I'll give you a, 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 well, an example, ATP. So I don't know if your audience knows what ATP is. Adenosine triphosphate is the energy molecule of the cell, right? And we make our body weight in ATP every day. Every molecule of ATP is churned between 200 to 300 times a day. So we make it, we use it. We make it, we use it. We make enough ATP in our hearts for every heartbeat. In other words, you have to make ATP for every heartbeat. So ATP then becomes critical, but because it's used up very rapidly, you have to keep reproducing it. So I can stimulate my brain for ATP and it, I'll feel great. I'll feel awake and alert and energized and so on. But then a, an hour, two or three hours later, it's gone. So how often do you have to repeat to maintain a benefit? It's very hard to overdo it. There's a study done on um, inflammation with adenosine. The adenosine receptor of the body is responsible for inflammation. So adenosine, then the research shows that you need 15 dose to optimally stimulate that adenosine receptor on the white blood cell. And then what happens is that that benefit lasts for a certain period of time, but you have to have that intensity optimally. After that, the curve goes like this. So 15 goes is right at the peak of that curve, right? Right when it starts to level off. So after it levels off, even if you keep increasing the intensity, it's not going to produce any more adenosine stimulation. The body won't have so much limit to be able to do that. What happens then? Right. Wasted energy. Essentially, it ignores. I've used high intensity magnetic fields. So if I want to stimulate that fracture, if I did 200 gauss to that fracture instead of 16 gauss, or if I did 3,000 gauss, then then you probably need to back off at a certain point in time because the body can't keep responding. And you know, if you try to swim, you want to swim the English Channel, you have to rest periodically. But you just exhaust. Right. So that's um, what is it? You basically exhaust the system. Yeah. And what type of benefits are, are shown in data with? PMF. We haven't really discussed that too much. You, you mentioned inflammation. You mentioned the benefit of uh, increasing energy production, but I know there's there's some additional so healing. There's some additional things that we haven't gotten into yet. All right. In the in the book Power Tools for Health, I outline 25 different actions of magnetic fields of the body. So that's not that's irrespective of disease or condition, and even to some extent irrespective of the body part. In my next book, Supercharge Your Health. So the Super Power Tools for Health book has more has the references. So if you're interested in the science, I'd get the power tools. So my next book is Supercharge Your Health, which basically it doesn't ignore the science, but there's no science in it. But it has all the principles. So that tells you how to use magnetic field therapy for, diff for about 80 different health conditions. So there are 27 that I've identified so far and written about, 27 different actions of magnetic field. So you alluded to some of them. So improved circulation is one is a key one. Um, decreasing swelling in the tissues. So if you're doing muscle building, delayed onset muscle soreness after weightlifting. If you do a magnetic field therapy right after your weightlifting program, you wake up the next morning with no muscle soreness. All right? You have very little lactic acid buildup of those muscles because you eliminated, you washed it out of the body with that magnetic stimulation by virtue of increasing circulation, by increasing ATP, by the electrochemical interactions and so on. There's lots of mechanisms. So nitric oxide production, stem cell production, 
Is that, is that proven data on that? Stem cells? Absolutely. There's a study done uh, at the University of North Carolina, well, actually it was done for NASA, where they stimulated uh, neural stem cells, 24-hour stimulation with neural stem cells. And they found a um, 300% 400% increase in stem cell production and the production of about 400 growth factors in those stem cells. That's 24 hours to what? So the was what, what, what year, what intensity? Um, that intensity was probably around, uh, well, the intensity that you start with versus the intensity that you end up with are two different things. But let's say it's probably around 100 gauss and uh, somewhere around 10 hertz. Very interesting. So well, I'm definitely going to pick up these books. I've, I have so much interest in PMF because I think it's the future of healing. I don't know if you agree with that, but you know, as as you say, physics and biophysics kind of lives on top of the the biochemical and even the biological nature of the human body, and it feels like it has this this overarching benefit that very few health practitioners are starting to tap into. Um, and I think I think the benefit is I think we're just starting to discover. I mean, you certainly have been in it for a long time, but as far as the the functional medicine slash medical world, I don't think anybody's really caught on at, at a high level. Oh, unfortunately, the way medicine works is uh, and that, and that's partly a government function, and it's partly an academic institution function. Uh, is they're also siloed, and because the FDA says if I want to treat diabetes or I want to treat diarrhea, then I have to get a, a procedure or a process approved by the FDA that shows and demonstrates that I can impact that process. So then, what happens is got one problem, one solution. And that's and the body's not like that at all. Most solutions have multiple actions, so we're limited. Then we're constrained by our our thought processes. Surgeons who use these devices for bone healing, they're using them. Do they use it for anything else? No, because they're taught this is what the government approved. That's what I'm using. Limited. To. In fact, they constrain the company. The company wants to sell those machines for any other use. They have to be part of a, of a research study. So that oh, and I think us to be able to use this technology for all the things it could do. Right. I think that that approach makes sense from the perspective of like not everyone has has a moral compass, and they could just start making all these outlandish claims that everyone's confused. So I, I think it's I think it's that's, useful. That's a big problem. That's a big problem, and that's why I wrote the Power Tools for Health book. And I want to say I want to show people this is not woo woo. This is not my supposition. It's not my theory that it's going to work. There's science. Lots and lots and lots mm -hmm. of times. So it's, magnetic field therapy has been around since the early 70s, 60s in Eastern Europe. But it's not new at all. But the science is building. The problem is it doesn't get put into the medical journals. And that's why you have to write a book. It summarizes all the stuff that's all over the place. Because different people will have different biases about what they're going to publish, right? So you, you can't get into the mainstream medical journals unless it's FDA approved. You have specific devices right now that you you suggest as being you know quote unquote the best or ones that you are um, a believer in. Obviously, there's maybe if you have if you have ownership benefit, then uh, you know if you could disclose that. I have to remove the concept of belief. Belief is still part of this, and we want you to believe in order to get the healing help because the belief is part of healing. But the magnetic field therapy does what it does no matter what. So yes, on drpollock.com, the D-R-P-A-W-L-U-K.com, there's a huge amount of information, and I have a store. There's also something called Product Comparison Guide on the homepage. If you click on that, it shows you all the different devices and I personally have tried, I personally use, and personally recommend. There are tons of devices that are out there that can be relatively effective, but if I don't have them, that doesn't mean they're not good, but it usually means that I haven't, I haven't decided that for various reasons, there's something called the buyer's guide on the website as well. It says, here are the different things you have to look for before you buy a piece of equipment, never mind what you need it for. Yeah. So that, that, that website has a lot of that in it. And the two books also have lists. So I've been on your site and I think it's an incredible resource. I still don't think it helped me make a decision on, because here's, here's, here's what's going on in my head, right? I was like, well, this, this one's 15 grand, this one's five grand. This one's five hundred bucks. Is it worth fifteen grand? Like, I'll, if it's going to be that much better, I'll spend the money. But, like, or is this five hundred dollar one just as good? It, you know, is it going to be 
30 times as, as effective or should I just spend, you know, spend a smaller amount of money and get the one that's, that's much more affordable. That's the, that's the conversation. I know it's very subjective. So like, that's, that's a power tool. Right? That's one of the reasons I wrote the book, uh, Supercharge Your Health. If you read through the book, you get a much better understanding of what magnetic fields do, the kinds of devices that are available, what they're likely to do in the body. That gives you a framework. So if it's still uh, not adequate for you to make a decision, we do offer free consultations. What I'm going to say right now, if you want a free consultation and you're only willing to spend 50 bucks, don't buy yeah. Buy whatever you want. If you have so, have a TBI, right? If you're suffering from a TBI, if you're suffering from COVID, you need something better, stronger. And there's plenty of science in the books that describes why you need something better, strong. Then the question becomes how much you spend. You spend two thousand dollars or twelve thousand dollars. And that's where you get the advice to, to get the right piece of equipment and then know how to use it. Yeah, and so if you can make a suggestion for someone who wants to optimize his brain, maybe TBI. As I work with a lot of athletes, very common to get a TBI. You know, is is the twelve thousand dollars six times better than the two thousand dollars one, or is it just like, hey, you need to do it more often? Well, the twelve thousand dollars machine is more likely to be better, and you may not need to do it as often because it's going to create a stronger push into the body. But you may be adequately. So I did a study on a two hundred dollars machine, the same one that I used for the kid. Or with TBI. So I had 20 people with TBI and they were using it two hours a day. We did we did tests, subjective tests uh, about uh, the equipment and we found out that they all improved within a week to two weeks, they improved significantly. Cognitive function, memory, sleep, relaxation, anxiety. And they continued it. So we continued the, the trial for three months. At three months, we stopped it. And then we retested them a month after they stopped it. They all lost fifty percent of their benefit. Mm. Not, not using it. My hope and goal at the time of the study was that we would get we would show evidence of healing. Well, we may have had some healing, but we didn't continue the study. At that point, all we knew is that if you stop it after three months, you regress, which means that we were helping the body and the brain to function better while they were using the magnetic therapy. It had to get to a point where it can improve itself to to be stable in its function. But when you stop it, it's like that sleep thing. All right. As soon as I took it off, it helped to improve function, but it didn't, it didn't obviously, obviously cause healing. So yeah, the higher intensity systems are going to give you more options and more capability and more flexibility. Lower intensity, you may have to use it more to get the same kinds of results. And it may still not be enough. There's a blog about the adenosine receptor at inflammation. And clearly you have to use higher intensity magnetic field to go deep into the body. If you want to stimulate across the brain, right? You want to decrease inflammation across the brain. And TBIs, every TBI has inflammation in that brain, right? Acutely and chronically. So if you want to stimulate across the brain, you need 4,000 gauss here to reach across here. Okay? And there's tables in the book about that. They show you that. But super useful. You can still get a benefit, but you're going to get optimized benefits by getting the right piece of equipment. So buying cheap gets cheap. Mm-hmm. Don't make your decision. Yeah. Do not make your decision based on cost. I think that's the challenge, right? Is sometimes you're like, you know, you get what you pay for. But when you're going into an uh, an area that like most people know very little about, you're like, well, is this worth eight grand or is I'm, am I just overpaying for something that's not worth that? And, and like a comparison is very hard to make when you literally like, I have no idea. I'm comparing apples to, to you know, walnuts here. I have no idea. Well, again, that's the reason for the books. So I think the we, yeah, we'll pick it up. Good amount of information. Books are very, very helpful. We also, you can also communicate with us and there's information in the books on how to get in touch with us. Um, you can do info at drpollock.com if you have questions. We we answer the emails. And you could ask questions about what machine, say what your problem is. If you want a consultation, there's a long form that has to be completed and you have to list why you want it, what kinds of problems you have, so what your goals are. And then we can, we do the consultation based on that. We can also advise you without having to have a consultation based on that information. But the more information you give us, the better the recommendation is going to be. Then you have to decide, here's my recommendation. And use, most of the time, I would give people like two or three options. So for example, if you have um, arthritis all over the body, or if you have osteoporosis, right? Osteoporosis needs high intensity magnetic fields because you have to stimulate all the bones in the body. Well, if you're going to, if you need um, let's say 8,000 gauss to stimulate all the bones in your body adequately, 
but you only buy 2,000 cows, then how much treatment time do you need? So, tr and then you have to decide, are you going to put in the time? Yeah. If you're not going to put in the time and you need more, don't bother. Or wait until you can fund the, the right equipment. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. Um, so I prefer for someone who's just, you know, there's nothing wrong. We just want to, a lot, I think a lot of my audience is like performance based. So uh, one, we want to train better, but two, we probably also want to live long. And and so we just said, what would I use on a daily or, or maybe every other day basis for just optimization of, of cellular function? All right, so go, going back to inflammation and the adenosine receptor. That you have to calculate how deep into the body you want to, you need to work. So it's measured across the brain, just for the brain itself, it's six inches approximately. Yeah. So like 4,000 gauss. You want to just stimulate the acupuncture points and meridians in the body, then you can get a, a, a biobalance. We have a device called a biobalance, which is 10 times stronger than the very low intensity machines that are multi level marketing. And it's a third the price, a quarter of the price, about, about half. So that's a very useful machine for just health maintenance. But if you have any health issues and anybody doing a lot of training work, anybody doing a lot of physical workout stuff, you need stronger magnetic therapy than that at 10 mm -hmm. Um In that case, you're probably going to need 2,000 to 4,000 Gauss machine. That's got a whole body applicator. So you need to treat the whole body for general conditioning. And then you have smaller applicators you put around the brain, you put over a shoulder, a hip, or a back. And then that will get you pretty decent results. So uh, the one I'd usually recommend, the most typically recommend for people who are doing a lot of working out is something called the Tesla Fit Plus 2. So Tesla Fit, Tesla is in the car and fit, has to be fit and tied. Yeah. Right, Tesla Fit, and there's a website, teslafit.com. Okay, I'll check it out. And then when you have higher needs, like if you have cancer or if you have osteoporosis, if you have diffuse arthritis in the body, you have autoimmune diseases, you may need something stronger. And then there are other options that are stronger than that. There, uh, We have tables again on drpollock.com and um, in the books on which other devices are. Would we want to, like if I can feel the PMF, that's that's good and that's normal and that's kind of expected, right? You can feel the electricity? It may have been, you may not. So even with the higher intensity systems, even with the 4,000 count system, you may not feel the electricity. It depends on your sensitivity. So uh, a lot of the very high intensity devices like the Hugo, like the premium flash and the ultra flash, if they put the coil over a muscle area, it will often stimulate the muscle. Right. If you can hear, if you hear tapping or you feel it tapping against you, you know it's working. And that's usually probably strong enough. So just a one- It's not necessarily a benefit. It's psychologically a benefit. Right. Not necessarily physically a benefit. It can be a physical benefit in those who have muscle spasms. Makes sense. Is there anything that we've missed that you think would be a topic that we should cover um, before we wrap? Well, if there's a particular uh, condition, I know with the work that you do, you people have all kinds of conditions. And the biggest problem that I find uh, with with uh, training people who are very athletic, working all the time, um, is that they are more focused on performance than recovery. Yeah, like, yeah. Recovery is more important than performance because what limits recovery the most, you know what causes aging? The most common cause of aging. The inflammation and oxidative stress. Not just oxidative stress. It's all of life's adventures along the way. This is why at homeopathy, you talk about layers, onions, layers and layers of onions, all the traumas that you've built up over the years and talk about a sprain of an elbow. That's a trauma. And that's in the system as well. That memory and also the physicality of it. So all of these all these devices help to remove a lot of that trauma out of the body. I think the biggest thing, if we're going to pick one ailment that everyone would benefit from, obviously inflammation is at the top of the list, but I would say capillary revascularization, like the microcapillary network. I know that PMF in general has that benefit. All PMFs do. Yep. Even a static magnet, even a fridge magnet put on a tissue will improve circulation. Universal uh, aspect of what magnetic fields do. And I love the fact that this has been around for so long because there's there's definitely a concern of like, you know, is too much of a good thing a bad thing? And it seems like that's not, from from your words, it seems like it's not a concern. Because of the design of the equipment. Because it's not EMF. Right. 
not EMF. And that's the key, the key element to all this, not EMF. There is a risk. <laughs> Actually, I tell people there's two risks. One is joking and one is not. One of the risks is that you do too much too fast. So if you just started PMF therapy, to say you get a higher intensity machine. Every part of your body is going to have a different level of sensitivity. Tra this is like training. Magnetic field therapy is like training. You don't get off the couch and run a marathon tomorrow. Okay. And different parts of your body are going to need different con considerations for the training, depending on what you're doing. All right? So think of it as training. You, tr you, you train, you repair, you, tr you rehab, and then you test. And then the testing tells you how much more you can advance if you can or you have to go back and keep doing what you were doing before. Well, but not field therapy can be the same, but same thing that way. The other risk at the other end is you may get the urge to put on a cape. And yeah, super urge, helpful. Put on as many capes as you want. I tell people, if you get the urge to jump over something tall, call me. Right. Here's my number. Let's let's talk about it first. Uh, Dr. Bullock, that was fantastic. That was truly uh, sifting through a lot of stuff. Of, I still have a million questions when it comes to understanding which ones to buy, but I'll definitely make use of your incredible resource that I've spent hours on your website in transparency and like, I'm like, oh, I think I understand a little bit, but I don't, now that I realize I didn't, so I need to go back there, read your books and, and dive in. So thank you for what you do. Very helpful, clarifying a lot, of, a lot of the questions. If you want more of the science, if you want more of the basis under, underlying all this, that's been my approach all along as a medical doctor, as having been on the faculties of multiple universities. I take that approach. I want to know as much about it as I can before I start recommending it to somebody. And when I recommend it, I know what the risks are, and I know what the likely benefits are going to be and how to use it properly. And that's yeah. different than what you tend to get from the rest of the people summoning PNFs. I think if someone out there is, is on the fence about making a decision, because what comes to mind is like, I'm going to go to a website. I have no idea if this is good. I don't have no idea if it works. I have no idea if it's got negative EMFs. Go to drpollock.com and you know, purchase one of the ones you have there. Uh, even doing in my research, your website comes up often with m researching most PMF devices, which you've done a great job of on your site with doing a lot of backlinking. So um, you're definitely the number one resource in the world for PMFs, and I'm really grateful for you making the time to be here. You're very welcome. Thank you. I would say if you're going to make an investment, a $4,000 investment in a machine, buy at least a Supercharger Health Book. Okay. dollars right? Yep. Make a $4,000 investment. Yeah, brilliant. Definitely will do. We'll link to that in the show notes and to your website um, as well. Dr. Bullock, thank you very much for being here. Enjoy the rest of your day. And that's a wrap, ladies and gents, boys and girls. Thanks for being here. I am your host, Pat Bukowski. I appreciate you making the time. I know that your time is valuable. I hope you found this podcast valuable. If you did, I would appreciate a review. Don't forget to follow this podcast. We have some amazing podcasts coming at you in the future. So a little bit about myself and Muscle Intelligence and the mission here at Muscle Intelligence. Ultimately, my mission is to help you sort through this incredible, vast landscape of information that is being thrown at us in every minute. It's really trying to start to understand what actually works and what doesn't. And so this podcast with Dr. Pollock today was my attempt at parsing through all of the seemingly misinformation, certainly the vast landscape of information that exists when it comes to PEMF therapy. So if you're someone who isn't familiar with PEMF therapy, I would rank PEMF therapy as a very useful modality that's probably worth considering if you have disposable income. So you, there, there's some people out there now kind of perpetuating certain PEMF devices. And oftentimes you guys got to realize that these tight guys are just trying to make money off of it, right? And so even though they're, they're like, oh, this is the best device and this is the one you need, uh, is that really the truth? And so I would say in general, do your homework, do your research, head up, uh, head over to Dr. Pollock's site. Uh, that's P-A-W-L-U-K, Dr. P-A-W-L-U-K.com and check out his uh, vast resources when it comes to pulsed electromagnetic field therapy. He's got books on there. He's got uh, devices on there. He's got things to help sleep. He's got a lot of a wide range of products, that's for sure. So ladies, gents, thanks for being here. I'm your host, Pat Mikulski. I love you. I appreciate you. Have an amazing day. And I look forward to seeing you in the next podcast. Thank you so much for tuning into Muscle Intelligence. If you enjoyed today's episode, please be sure to share it with at least one person you know. Make sure you're subscribed so you never miss an episode. 
This podcast is for information purposes only. The statements and views on this podcast are not medical advice. This podcast, including Ben Bikulski and the producers, disclaim responsibility for any possible adverse effects from the use of information contained herein. Opinions of guests are their own, and this podcast does not endorse or accept responsibility for statements made by guests. This podcast does not make any representations or warranties about guest qualifications or credibility. This podcast may contain paid endorsements or advertisements for products or services. Individuals on this podcast may have a direct or indirect financial interest and products or services referred to herein. If you think you have a medical problem, consult a licensed physician.